Hello, everyone, and welcome to Lancaster, Pennsylvania. Lancaster Lebanon League Section 1 matchup tonight for between McCaskey and a Mannheim Township. My name is Bob McCool, courtside with Reggie Weiss. Should be a very interesting basketball game. The McCaskey Red Tornado, the defending Lancaster Lebanon League champion, and the District 3 Quad A runner-up as well. Steve Powell in his seventh, excuse me, in his eighth season as the head coach for the Red Tornado. And Reggie, there's a lot of highlight film on the reel for the Red Tornado, but the leader of the pack is six foot four inch junior Dustin Salisbury. Dustin Salisbury, six four, great leaping ability, runs the floor extremely well. 23 pointers, leads the team with a 21 point average, could be a big time ball player. He's got all this potential in the world. I think sometimes he even says his attitude gets in the way of what he can do. Mannheim Township head coach Jim Kreider and a lot of people on paper think that the team most likely to knock Lancaster Lebanon League champion at McCaskey off the blocks could be the Blue Streaks. They are off to a four and three regular season a league matchup and their leading scorer is Mark Guilliford, six foot five inch senior. Mark Guilliford is one of the trio of big men for Township. I'll tell you, I'm impressed with his foul shooting ability and he seems like he's the real leader out there. He's been, he's, he's been leading them in rebounding and he has taken the leadership role according to Coach Kreider. Mannheim Township controls the tap. Kevin Erb, Nick Martinelli, Mark Guilliford, Colin Horan and Josh Buecher they're starting five. Martinelli, the point guard, gives it up to Herb at the elbow of the foul line, knocked loose momentarily, and a turnover as well as the McCaskey Red Tornado in their home white in front of their home crowd forces the turnover on defense, and McCaskey's starting five, John Cameron, 5'10", senior guard, Cameron Whittington, 6'0", senior guard, Akeem the Dream Washington, 6'6", six six inside, he is a junior, 6'4", junior Dustin Salisbury that we talked about, and 6'4", inch senior, Perry Patterson. Perry Patterson right now posted up on the low post, gets the ball, looks for help, and now works his way inside. His shot off the mark, and one shot and done as Guilford comes away with it for the Blue Streaks. I think they have to deny Perry Patterson the ball downstairs, otherwise he's going to cause some major damage to him. And Patterson denies the pass inside to Kevin Erb. Nice touch by the Red Tornado. There is Perry Patterson, the outstanding basketball talent and football talent as well. Martinelli has it on the wing. Now he dumps it inside to Herb. Herb trying to back up his defender and turns it over for the second time for Mannheim Township. So the Blue Streaks with two possessions and two turnovers, and they show a little bit of full court pressure defense. Looks like they're like a 1-3-1. One, one. No trouble for McCaskey as Washington had his first shot partially blocked. That is own rebound and gets the first bucket of the basketball game. McCaskey a little bit of a zone themselves, full court, 2-2-1. Two, two, no troubles for Mannheim Township. Guilliford pulling up from the foul line, no good. Kevin Herb runs down the loose rebound. Good look inside, but nobody home momentarily as Colin Horan tried to save it but ran out of real estate, and that'll be the third turnover for Mannheim Township. So Jim Kreider talking to us before the basketball game about the one thing he didn't want to do is turn it over, and he's 3-for-3 three three right now. And that's what he said they did so well at home. Didn't lose the ball. A five-point game the first time around. A great look inside. Perry Patterson to Akeem Washington for his second field goal. Perry Patterson found people on a football field. He can find them on a basketball court, too. And they lock it loose as Cameron Winnington picks up the loose basketball, gets his first field goal as the trap for McCaskey gets its first turnover. Colin Horan free for three off the back iron, and Washington has the rebound, and here comes Perry Patterson. Dishes it off, Cameron to Cameron Whittington. First one no good, second one is good, and McCaskey jumps out to a quick eight to nothing lead, and it will result in a timeout called by the Blue Streaks. It'll be a 30 second timeout, as McCaskey got everything going the way they wanted early on. And exactly what he told us before the game. We can't, we can't lose the ball. We gotta stop them from running. Both things are happening. They're losing the ball. McCaskey's running on them early. Here you see as, as Jerry, as we look at the great pass inside from Perry Patterson, it doesn't matter what kind of surface is underneath his feet, whether it's a football field or a basketball court, Perry Patterson can distribute the basketball. Six foot four and 230 pounds. And he kind of fills a role for this McCaskey team like an Anthony Mason used to do for the Charlotte Hornets. As big as he is, he can, he can distribute the basketball very well. They almost use him as like a point forward as opposed to a point guard. And on that second break, you can see how unselfish they are, looking for each other on a, on a break. And now Mannheim Township, no trouble to get it across half court. That hasn't been the problem. It's been in their own offensive half where they've turned it over. Martinelli giving it up. 
And now it's Colin Haram with a good give and go inside. Herb has his shot blocked, but he's fouled. First foul of the basketball game is going to go against McCaskey. And he's going to send Kevin Herb to the line to shoot two. He to put his hands straight up in the air. I think he, put, he causes a problem for him to shoot the ball. But it's a tendency a lot of players have. They get someone in trouble and all at once, what they want to do is go after it. And when they go after it, I'll tell you, two things happen. Not nine times out of ten, you're going to hit him. And the other ten, ten percent, you're going to bail the official out. <laughs> Kevin Herb, a 55% foul shooter on the season, goes two for two. The foul, by the way, was on Cameron Whittington. And it gets Manheim Township on the board at eight to two. And now McCaskey turns it over for the first time. As they look inside again to Akeem Washington, who is listed at six foot six. And Steve Powell telling us before the basketball game, they think he might be up to about six foot eight. Can't teach that kind of development. No. <laughs> you can only hope for it. Nick Martinelli looks to penetrate, cut off by Cameron Gilliford free, and pops Kevin Gilliford, or excuse me, Mark Gilliford for his first field goal. It's a two-pointer, and it's an eight to four game. It looks like Township is showing like, well, they're double teaming here, but it looks like they're just trying to slow McCaskey down with a lot of pressure outside. Dish out to Cameron for three, no good. Colin Haran has the rebound, and he looks to run. Gives it up instead to Nick Martinelli. Martinelli being guarded by John Cameron. Now they get it, and nice a good pass. pass from Gilliford to Erb for two. That's a nice little give and go. It's a nice pass by Gilliford. So an eight to nothing run for McCaskey to start it. Now Manheim Township on a six point run, and it's eight to six in favor of McCaskey. And another turnover for the Red Tornado as it's knocked loose, and Josh Duker comes up with it. So the timeout by Jim Kreider and Manheim Township becomes very effective. Got him back into the ball game, slowed him down. We approach the four-minute mark. Josh Buecher with his first offensive look. No good. It's tipped around. It goes into the hands of Kevin Herb. He's put back no good. Has a third opportunity that's not close. Still on the floor. And Buecher runs it down and saves the possession for Manheim Township. Good hustle by Manheim Township to get themselves another look. Martinelli from long range three off the rim. And this time Washington able to run down the rebound. And quickly Man McCaskey Patterson to John Cameron for his first two. And that ends that six-point run for Manheim Township. It's 10-6, Red Tornado. Herb looks to penetrate, cut off, dishes it. Gilliford has his shot blocked by Washington. Here comes Patterson again, looking ahead to Cameron. Pass a little bit too long, and Manheim Township does a great job of saving it. It's Colin Haran diving into the bench and saving the possession for Manheim Township. Both teams not leaving anything behind right now. Buecher thought about the three. Instead gives it up to Herb, whose shot is partially blocked by Patterson. Salisbury looking for his first shot of the basketball game. Gives it up instead to Cameron Whittington, who puts it up on the baseline, no good. Washington runs down the long rebound and travels with it. Township's attacking him as, as I mean, uh, McCaskey's attacking him as quickly as they can. Getting it up, going after the ball, staying after him the whole time. And now we're still in our 2-2-1, full court trap. And Washington down there with those long arms out in the front of that point. And again, Manheim Township gets it across easily. Haran from the baseline, good. Colin Haran with his first field goal. It's a 10-8 basketball game. Great ball, but kept it off the floor. Look for somebody up the court. 2.48 remaining first quarter. Great look inside. Salisbury to Washington. Tried for the dunk, couldn't get it, but he's fouled. It's a great look by Salisbury to find him underneath the basket. Great patience by Salisbury as well. As we said, still looking for his first shot of the game and instead gives it up inside to Washington. And if he doesn't hit him, he's going to throw it down. Probably a great foul here. So Washington to the foul line, under 50% on the season, 10 for 21 at the line. And he makes the first. So Team Washington right now, the leading scorer for the Red Tornado, averaging just four points a game coming in. He's got five already. Foul, by the way, was on Mark Gilliford, his first, team's first. Washington will shoot the second of his two-shot foul. Can't get the roll in the second one, so it's a three-point game in favor of McCaskey at 11 to 8. 240 remaining first quarter of play. Martinelli spins off the defender, looks instead for Kevin Herb, but Kevin Herb getting a whistle for the travel. 
Kevin Irvin's a little tentative downstairs. He's putting the ball on the floor and he's getting himself in trouble. I think he's just got to turn around, square him, and just attack him, shoot him in their face or whatever. But he turns and puts his back on it, puts it on the floor, and against his speed, that's going to get him in trouble. And one, it has. Excuse me, Reggie. One, three, one trap. It looks like for Manheim Township. Again, McCaskey gets it across half court. Now Perry Patterson at the point, looking for the backdoor cut. Cameron Winnington couldn't finish, and Gilbert has the rebound. Perry Patterson's getting ready for like four or five assists already. <laughs> Unbelievable. The young man will be headed to Syracuse and be the future quarterback for Paul Pasqualoni's orange. But Nick Martinelli pulls up with a foul line off a screen for two. It's a nice hard screen at the top. It's in a one-point game at 11 to 10. McCaskey with possession and clinging to that one-point lead. Washington gives it up outside. They work it around Cameron free for three off the rim. And again, good work on the boards by Manheim Township. Here comes Colin Haran. Gives it up to Buecher, popping from long range. Shot partially blocked. Patterson has the rebound in the red tornado. Pick it ahead. Salisbury on the wing. Two. Dustin Salisbury with his first field goal. And he's going to go to the hole. He's going to do a lot of nice things. He's going to pause. He's going to he's going to hold it there for you. And again, he's still going to have it up. He's still going to be up in the air. So even though it took six and a half minutes before Salisbury gets on the scoreboard, he gets a big deuce for McCaskey to make it a 13 to 10 game in favor of the Red Tornado. Good patience right now for Manheim Township working against the man-to-man. -man. Guilford has it beyond the arc. Buker thought about it, changed his mind when he saw Akeem Washington staring at him. Patterson knocked it away momentarily, but Manheim Township keeps possession inside of one minute remaining. First quarter of play. Martinelli has Patterson come out and get in his face, and Patterson's getting a whistle for the reach. Barry Patterson commits his first, team's second. It will not be a shooting foul. They have to have him on the floor all the time. He just does so many nice things for him. He finds people, he rebounds, he handles it. He'll become the point on occasion. Barry Patterson can do it all out here as well as on a football field. He is a tremendously talented athlete. And you see he has a, if you can see him on the left-hand side of your screen, he's got a brace on his left knee that he injured during the stretch drive for this McCaskey football team. There you see the brace on his left knee. And he had some problems with it early on. They thought he might miss some time in the basketball season, but he did not. And now a turnover against Manheim Township with 46 seconds remaining. McCaskey leading by three. So Duquan Talton, six foot three inch senior, checks into the game at the stoppage of play for McCaskey and also into the game for Manheim Township wearing number 12 with six foot senior Danny Klingsizer. Klingsizer. Excuse me, Martinelli's going to get whistled for a foul. John Cameron with a lot of explosive speed right here. Right around Martinelli, gets to the basket, gets fouled. you got to keep him between him and the basket, otherwise he's going to hurt you. He's got a lot of speed. You don't necessarily want to send him to the foul line either. 20 for 23 at the foul line so far on the season, and I just put the kiss of death <laughs> on it right there. I was talking to Bob earlier about it. 80% from the foul line. He'll get in second. Again, the foul was on Nick Martinelli. And Cameron goes one for two. Three points for John Cameron. And it's a four-point game at 14-10. 35 seconds remaining in the first quarter of play. And I Township fell in a quick 8-0 hole, but got themselves right back into a great look inside. Martinelli to Herb, who has it blocked partially from behind. Tipped out of bounds. Last touch by Klingsize. And so it'll stay McCaskey basketball. That's a nice pass down to Herb again, but you know what? He puts it on the floor again. All you gotta do is just catch it and square and lay it, and he's giving McCaskey time to regroup themselves and catch him and play defense on him. And he had Perry Patterson on his back, maybe even could have picked up a foul in addition. Right now, Salisbury working inside. Great look at the Quan Talk for two. Justin Salisbury with the pretty feet across the paint, and it's a six-point lead for McCaskey in the final seconds of the first quarter. Gilliford to beat the buzzer for three, off the mark, and that will do it. The McCaskey Red Tornado with great distribution over the course of this first quarter of play, and it's helped them to a six-point lead. At the end of one, it's McCaskey 16, and Manheim Township 10. Justin. Back at McCaskey in Lancaster, Pennsylvania, along with Reggie Weiss. My name is Bob McCool. The Manheim Township Blue Streaks right now trailing McCaskey by a 16 to 10 score. The Red Tornado will start with the basketball. As checking into the game right now, Brandon Way has it for McCaskey. And a foul will be called underneath. As you see, the
scoring numbers right now. McCaskey with that great distribution, freeing themselves up, shooting 54% from the field, and just 29% for Mannheim Township. Foul called against Mannheim Township's Mark Guilford. That'll be his second. A great look inside South. There he scores and he's fouled. And McCaskey continues to distribute the basketball very well, and it's going to allow Dustin Salisbury to head to the foul line to shoot. He comes across with a with a real nice screen here. Turns, squares, power move. Does a great job. Now he needs his foul to make it a great three-point play. Kevin Herb picking up the personal foul for Mannheim Township. That'll be his first, team's fourth. And as Reggie said, Dustin Salisbury will head to the foul line to try to complete the three-point play. And he gets the friendly roll. Salisbury with five of McCaskey's now 19 points, 19-10 in favor of the Red Tornado. And a whistle and a foul will be called against Salisbury. Jim Kreider on the bench for Mannheim Township. And they will inbound the basketball right in front of him. Again, McCaskey with that man-to-man -man pressure. Colin Haran gives it up to Danny Klingsizen. Klingsizen kicks it out. Martinelli for three off the back iron. And a good box out down low by Perry Patterson. Long pass up ahead. Brandon Way for two. And Perry Patterson hooking up with one of his favorite receivers on the football field as well. Brandon Way for his first field goal is 21 to 10. That's an outlet like you see in Division I basketball or the NBA. Perry Patterson had slowed down his recruiting process on the football field because he wanted to go somewhere and play basketball as well as football. And finally settled on playing football at Syracuse. But he had sights of playing very high at the, at the basketball level, and you can start to see why. You look at him, and at 6'4 and 230 pounds, He's deceptively quick. You know what, he, lo he looks, you look at him, he doesn't look like he is that quick until he starts doing things and then all at once you're in trouble because he's made you look bad. And he causes such problems defensively. We talked with Jim Kreider before the basketball game that he can handle the basketball, he can distribute it, so if you put a guard on him, then he's gonna go down and post you up down low. And then you have more problems. Salisbury working along the baseline and Salisbury causing problems as well. Dustin with his fifth point of the quarter, seventh of the night. Again, Manheim Township has some trouble with the possession in the second quarter for the Blue Streaks. Starts much like the first quarter did. And right now, a seven-point run for McCaskey is going to result in another timeout for Manheim Township. Six and a quarter left in the second quarter play. It's McCaskey 23, Manheim Township 10. Back at McCaskey High School. It is 23-10 right now. McCaskey on top of Mannheim Township. McCaskey started his basketball game with an eight-point run. Mannheim Township got right back in it to make it 8-6. But right now, the Red Tornado is on another run. This one, a 13-point run. It was 11-10 at the closest point. And right now, it is 23-10. McCaskey on top and resulting in another timeout for Jim Kreider at Mannheim Township. No, another good timeout because he's got to make sure this doesn't get away from him way too early in the ball game. He's going to have too big a hole to, to dig out of, and then all at once he goes in at halftime down 20 some. Now he looks at these players and says, Can we regroup at their place? That's tough. The first meeting between these two teams back on the 18th of December went to McCaskey at Manheim Township. 71 66. The Red Tornado were, came out on top of that one. Extending what was then a winning streak in the Lancaster Levin League. That winning streak was shortly was stopped shortly thereafter. John Cameron for three, good. First three pointer of the basketball game, and it's a 26 to 10 lead now for McCaskey. If John Cameron makes that three. Now you got to go out and get him, but he's explosive. Now he's going to get around you. He's going to be tough to handle all night long. Martinelli has it right now. Gives it up to Klingsizen. And Manhattan Township continues to look down low for Kevin Herb. Herb with a good move this time and got Patterson off his feet. He doesn't play with it this time, you know what I mean? He catches it, he puts it on the floor, but he's going somewhere with it real quick, which is nice. Ends a 15-0 run for McCaskey. This time, the long-range three by Brandon Way is well off the mark and back up the blue streaks. Kling size 
Gives it up to Colin Horan. Good look inside. They work it around. Can't come up with it. The ball is tapped loose. And finally, Dequan Talton comes away with it. Gives it up to Perry Patterson. Goes hard to the hole and runs over a man on the way to get there. It'll be an offensive foul called against Perry Patterson. Martinelli takes a charge on Perry Patterson. It's a great step in, and you've got to give him a lot of credit for stepping in on Perry Patterson. Gets run over. Perry Patterson's got to come to a stop. He's going to take him out of the ball game after this because he doesn't want to get him into foul trouble early in the second quarter. That is the second personal against Perry Patterson. Team foul number four. And Patterson comes out of the game. Kling size and beats the pressure and takes it to the hole for his first field goal. Danny Kling size and makes it a 12-point game at 26-14. So the Blue Streak's trying to work their way back into this basketball game. Brandon Wade, baseline move, no good. Dequan Talton's offensive put back, no good. Wade with a th third opportunity for two. Good work again on the offensive glass by the Red Tornado. They double the lead now at 14, 28-14. Wing size and running the point. Gives it up to Josh Ellis inside. Now they work it back outside. Kevin Herb comes up short. Ball is knocked loose and Salisbury has it. Long bounce pass, Brandon Way going hard to the hole and he's fouled. That was gonna be called by Nick Mar on Nick Martinelli, that'll be his second. Dustin Salisbury sees it the whole way, puts it on the floor so very few hands can get on it. And then we got a nice little power move to the basket. Now we gotta get to the line and make two. Reg, you gotta be impressed with the way McCaskey has passed the basketball tonight. They have distributed exceptionally well. And you know, what? some people go into the basket, they're seven feet away. I mean, they could take it like a four shot. They're looking for somebody else. Sounds weird. A great little baseline move. Probably could have powered it up. Found somebody on the other end. Pretty easy layup. Very unselfish team. Brandon Way at the foul line. Now one for five on the season as he misses the first. Way averaging at 2.3 points per game. So that's four already. Make it five as he gets nothing but net on the second one. And makes it a 15 point game now in favor of McCaskey at 29. 14. And that Township can hit the long range three, and that's exactly what they need right now to get back in this. Herb has it low post, and it has a shot blocked from behind by Colt. Good help defensively, and Salisbury, oh, slams it off the back of the iron. Dustin got the crowd on its feet, but he comes up empty. Wing size with a good move, Herb for two. I think Dustin Salisbury got up too high the last time. <laughs> I hate when that happens. <laughs> you know what? I can't tell you how many times that's happened to me. <laughs> I can only dream about getting that high. We'll see what? it again. Watch how high he gets. He gets up so high, he's like, wow. <laughs> what am I doing up here? Wanted to bring the house down with that one, but instead he comes up empty. And to Manheim Township's credit, they took it right back down the other way and found Kevin Herb inside for two. It's a 13-point lead for McCaskey. And a good look inside, Martinelli to Herb for two more. Herb in double figures now with 10. Kevin Herb starting to assert himself a little bit. He's not, he's not afraid, he's not afraid to attack him anymore. Manheim Township slowing down the turnover rate a little bit. They had five of them at the end of the first quarter. They have eight of them right now. And because, well, this time the shot is blocked from behind. Salisbury had it blocked from behind by Kevin Herb. Wing size and try to find a cutter, nothing there, and Salisbury has it back. He's in trouble and he's fouled. Josh Ellis trying to recover defensively, runs down Dustin Salisbury, and he'll get called for the foul. <laughs> Dustin Salisbury has the loose basketball. And he's gonna make something happen here, but he gets bumped on the way down. Mark Gilliford will check back into the basketball game for Mannheim Township with his two personal fouls. John Cameron will also check back into the game. Brandon Way, who had a busy few minutes, will come out as Steve Powell has developed quite a bench over the course of this season. He is not comfortable running nine and 10 players out there on any given night. Brandon Way gave him some valuable moments. He made it give him a quick five points. Cameron quickly puts up the long range shot, no good. Gilliford immediately gets the rebound. Martinelli looking up the floor. Good job by McCaskey to get back. Wing size and steps inside the arc, kicks it back out. Colin Oran also working his way inside. Has his shot blocked from behind. Back comes the red tornado, and ahead of the pack was Duquan Talt, but he traveled before he got his hands on the basketball. Turnover number seven for McCaskey. And another substitution back into the game for Manheim Township is 6'2 junior Josh Buker. As 
Colin Horan will come out. Horan, perhaps their best outside shooter, but he just hadn't been looking for it a whole lot lately. McCaskey going after a full man right now. Took off the 2-2-1 two -two press. We're just going to attack a man-to-man -man 95 feet. Still not a whole lot of problems for Manheim Township to get across half court. It's the, half, it's the offensive half court that's been the problem. Again, they turn it over, but Josh Ellis got it right back. And gets called for a three-second violation. So two turnovers for Manheim Township in one possession. It's not easy to do. <laughs> it seems like when Township gets it and attacks, they're in much better shape than with their back to the basket, putting on the floor, playing with it a little bit. It seems like that's where they're causing all the problems. 11 turnovers for the Blue Streets, but again, most of them have been in their own offensive half court. Exactly. So it has not been the pressure for McCaskey that's caused the problem. Dustin Salisbury has it on the wing, pulls up for the off-balance shot, no good. Tapped around and Buger comes up with a rebound. A real tough shot when you're falling away. Perhaps his first real bad effort of the night. Kling size it for three off the rim and off the guide wire, out of bounds, so it will go over to McCaskey with an 11-point lead. Do not adjust the picture on your screen. It didn't get Docker in the gym. Joel Holler just checked into the game. Six foot six, 340-pound offensive, defensive lineman, second team offensive lineman on the all, all second team all state, excuse me, offensive lineman. And needless to say, he puts a big presence inside for McCaskey. But the Red Tornado didn't get anywhere near him as they turn it over at half court. Township with a little trap of themselves right now. And on Township gets the basketball back, trailing by 11, 29-18 with 1.51 remaining in the first half. Looking for a pick and roll. Martinelli gives it to Herb for two. That's a nice screen and a roll to the basket. And it's now a nine-point game at 29-20. to 20. As Manheim Township is on a six-point run of their own. And again with the pressure. This time a good look inside to Joel Holler, and he'll go to the line. Dustin Salisbury with the feed, and it's going to send Joel Holler to the line for two. Kevin Herb gets the ball, and he attacks the basket. He's in much better shape than when he puts his back to the basket and puts it on the floor. That's a nice little bounce pass across the floor again. We talk about the passing ability of McCaskey. That's what they've done very well tonight. Is not only distributed, but they've done it very well with the bounce pass. And Coach Powell, you can tell he's teaching unselfishness to all his players. Who's going to score what night? Irrelevant. They just look for each other so well. Kevin Herb with his two fouls is going to have to come out of the basketball game with 127 remaining. Joel Haller goes over two at the line, but Cameron Whittington there for the offensive putback. Whittington with his sixth point of the night, and it's an 11 point game lead now for McCaskey at 31 20. Those are the plays that drive coaches crazy. Tyler Nichols into the game for the first time for Manheim Township, wearing number 40. Martinelli with a pump fake, got Akeem Washington up in the air and got him to pick up a foul. It'll be just the first on Akeem Washington, team foul number five against the Red Tornado. I think every time the guards are going to the basket, they're trying to keep an eye on where he is, because he's got to go after him. He's got the bot to do it too. 6'7 and a wingspan of 6'10. Martinelli, 70% at the foul line, makes the first. Three points for Nick Martinelli. Nick was the leading scorer in the first meeting between these two teams for the Blue Streaks with 17. Dustin Salisbury led all scorers that night with 26. Martinelli goes two for two. It's a nine-point game, and here comes some pressure again for Manheim Township. Gasky, no problems with it. Cameron Whittington strong to the hole for two. Great penetration, nice pull up, look for people, no one challenges, take the little jumper. And on Township had the free shot, turned it down instead. Martinelli has it inside of 50 seconds remaining. They're working around the perimeter. Now Nichols has it on the low post. Gives it up instead to Klingsizen. Looking for a three, but nothing there. Klingsizen steps in for two, no good. Great tap from the other side by Josh Buker. Great reverse tap. I don't know if he knew he tapped it in himself. Well, if he tapped it in himself or he tapped it off the hands of the team Washington, but Josh Buecher is going to get the two. 20 seconds remain first half. A team Washington lowers the shoulder and picks up the offensive foul. That'll be the second on Akeem Washington. And team foul number six. Let's see that play again and see exactly what happened. Buecher comes from the far side. Watch his back's going to be back. Watch this. 
He's got, he's got he's got his back to the rim and he tips it backwards. You have a Keen Washington an assist on it, but gets Josh Fuker the bucket. Be now, now a foul is going to be called and stop the clock with 10 seconds left. Salisbury commits the foul and it's the bonus time, so really a bad mistake for McCaskey as he stops the clock and sends it to the line and Salisbury picks up his second personal foul. It seems like McCaskey has had seven or eight fouls out at the half court range. The guys aren't going anywhere, they're just reaching on him. And stopping the clock and sending the line, really adding to the punishment for McCaskey. He sends Josh Buecher to the foul line. He is now six for eight on the season as he makes the first and he'll get a second in the bonus. Makes them both. With 10 seconds remaining, it's 33-26 now. McCaskey on top. Time enough for the Red Tornado. Salisbury has it right now. Gives it up to Washington. Baseline jumper, no good. Joel Holler leaning in with a tap. And they're going to call big Joel Holler for the offensive foul. Touch again in a half-court trap. 2-2-1. Two, two, we've got a shot, and we've got Joe on the back. We've got a nice little block out, but with Joe's body, when he's going to move somebody, he's going to move somebody. <laughs> again, doesn't matter what surface is underneath his feet either. <laughs> Joel had missed a whole lot of meals, and he is an outstanding prospect as an offensive lineman for McCaskey. Again, second team All-State, and he's just a junior, so he's got room to grow. You know what, and he gets up and down the floor very well. And he's certainly something that the college coaches will look at in recruiting. Salisbury at from three-quarter court to beat the buzzer, no good, and that will do it. An action-packed first half of play, and at the end of one half, it is McCaskey 33, Mannheim Township 26. Welcome back to Lancaster McCaskey High School. Along with Reggie Weiss, my name is Bob McCool. Halftime of the Lancaster Liberty League Section 1 matchup. It is McCaskey on top of Mannheim Township by a score of 33-26. Reg, pretty much what we expected to see over the course of this game. Back and forth both ways. Both teams using some trapping defenses really to set up what they want to do. Mannheim Township wanting to use the trap to slow things down. McCaskey wanting to pick up the pace. They've both forced a lot of turnovers, and it's to their advantage when it works. When McCaskey started the game off, it seemed like Township lost the ball on their own, like you said, at the offensive end. McCaskey was, was guarding them. They were after them like they normally get after people, but it seemed like that Township was causing their own problems. And in the first five, six trips, they lost the ball five times. And it resulted in an 8 to nothing lead to start this game for McCaskey. And then Manon Township got right back into it with a little bit of a run themselves. The big difference in this game right now, McCaskey closing the first quarter and starting the second quarter, finishing off a 15-0 run. That's been the difference in the scoreboard. But for Manheim Township, they were able to keep themselves in this basketball game by working it down low. Kevin Erb establishing himself down low at eight of his 12 points in the second quarter. Kevin Erb was assertive. I, I, I'll give him credit there. Early in the game, he, he played with it a little bit. He turned his back. He, 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 he put the ball not going to the basket, and he got picked a couple times. Then he started taking the ball and just going to the basket. He became much more assertive, and he really looked good out there. And it made a big difference as Manheim Township was able to stay in the basketball game. But for McCaskey, the big difference in this basketball game probably comes down to distributing the basketball. We look at When we look at halftime numbers, we'll see their shooting percentages just below 50%, and a lot of that is caused by the fact that they made such great basketball passes and got some people in good position for free shots. Salisbury can score. Patterson can score. But they really do look for other people, and I'm really impressed at how well they do look for other people. They're always going somewhere. They're always looking to find somebody else. Pat Patterson has an outlet, and he throws it from his end, I mean from their end, all the way down to the other end, two-hand, over-the-head pass for a guy going in for a layup. And we'll take a look now at those halftime statistics, and we'll see some of the numbers that we are talking about. McCaskey able to shoot the basketball extremely well, and as we talk about the great passes, Cameron Whittington, their leading scorer for McCaskey at halftime with eight points. And the halftime stats show McCaskey 14 for 29 from the field, where Manheim Township 10 for 27. Big numbers for Manheim Township. They could not afford to turn it over. They've turned it over 11 times. Rebounding is pretty even, but I would imagine the offensive rebounds favor McCaskey. They've had themselves a fair number of second and third shot opportunities. They seem like they're getting after it much quicker, much quicker than, than Township is. I mean, and it's not the jumping ability. It's just they're hitting the floor, going right back up, and they're staying after it. And we'll take a break, and we'll come back with the start of the second half of play at the halftime. It is McCaskey 33, Manheim Township 26. 
back at Lancaster McCaskey High School, along with Reggie Weiss. My name is Bob McCool. Starting to start the second half of play, Lancaster Lemon League Section 1. The Lancaster Lemon League is divided, their 24 teams are divided among three eight team divisions. This, the biggest school divisions, all these schools in Section 1, Quad A schools, the biggest division in the state of Pennsylvania. And McCaskey leading the division right now with a 6-1 and one record, a four-way tie for second place between Mannheim Township, Hempfield, Warwick, and Ephrata, all at 4-3 and three coming into play tonight. Mannheim Township turns it over in their first possession. Patterson gives it up to Cameron, free for the baseline for two. So again, the turnovers hurt Mannheim Township. That's their 12. But quickly back the other way. Horan has a shot blocked from behind by Washington. Patterson tried to save it, but saved it right off of Colin Horan, who feeds Kevin Herb for a quick two. So McCaskey gives up the two inside to make it a 35-28 game. Salisbury looking inside to Akeem Washington. Washington loses the handle on it. The ball is loose. Guilford on the floor to get it. Still loose on the floor. And eventually it's going to be a dual possession. And the possession arrow keeps it in McCaskey's favor. Coaches love to see their guys go on the floor, go and get the ball, that's for sure. McCaskey 35, Mannheim Township 28. McCaskey to inbound under their own basket. Dustin Salisbury has it right now, looking inside. Cameron Winnington posting up and scoring. Cameron Winnington in double figures with 10. And Dustin Salisbury really looks to find him all the time. Back quickly comes Mannheim Township as Mark Guilford gets a quick two. Excuse me, Colin Horan gets the quick two for Mannheim Township. Horan's second field goal of the night. Back to a seven point game. Salisbury. Excuse me, Patterson has it. Gives it up. Cameron again for three. This time off the back iron. Good box out by Kevin Herb. Very nice box out. Gave no room to go get the ball. Quickly, Martinelli looking inside. Guilford backing Salisbury down. Couldn't get a good angle, and Salisbury gets the rebound. Did everything right, but found himself a little bit too far underneath the basket. Now Patterson will wait for offensive help. Cameron Whittington for three. Good. Cameron Winnington with his first three of the night is seventh of the season. Patterson has the ball in his hand. It's like he's just waiting for the right opportunity at the right time. He doesn't force anything. He's just taking his time. Colin Horan has it knocked away by Patterson right into the hands of Cameron Winnington. Winnington right down the middle for two. No one made him pick up his dribble and he made him pay. Exactly right. We got a three on two. Somebody has to stop the ball. Somebody's got to pick up the next pass. They both split. He just took it right down the center of the court. You see Patterson on one wing. You see Salisbury on the other. And your defensive instincts tell you to go that way. And Whittington takes a peg. And now Martinelli goes right down the middle for an easy two for Manon Township. Suddenly the middle has opened up and both teams take advantage of it. Lead is now at 10, 42 32. McCaskey on top. John Cameron will put the ball in his hip and slow things down momentarily, setting up the offense. Cameron Whittington again penetrates, has his shot partially blocked. Washington missed it, tapped around. Washington has his hands on it again. There's that long wingspan. Can't come up with it. And finally, Cameron Whittington finishes it off inside. He's having a huge quarter. He's got nine points in the quarter. That's a lot of second shots to give up. Guilford back quickly the other way, gets a quick two for Mannheim Township. Just the second field goal for Mark Guilford on the ninth. Township's doing a nice job of guard. They just got to go get the ball off the boards after it's missed. Still a 10-point lead for McCaskey, 44-34 as we approach the halfway mark of the third period of play. Patterson has it right now at the top, gives it up to John Cameron. Patterson looking for his first field goal tonight, or is he? He's looking inside instead to Cameron Whittington, and Whittington's going to the foul line. I think Patterson could be the point guard for some people. As we, uh, we talk about Perry Patterson, his scoring numbers are down since the Christmas holidays by about four points a game, and Steve Powell couldn't be happier. Watch his penetration. Nice little pass over. He's, he sees everybody on the floor all the time. Cameron Whittington will go to the foul line, and he will shoot two. The foul was on Kevin Herb. That is his third. Josh Buecher will check out of the game, and 5'11 senior Dennis Stratton will check into the game for Mannheim Township, wearing the blue and white of the visitors. And McCaskey in front of their home crowd right now, putting on an impressive performance, especially Cameron Whittington in this third quarter. 
He extends it to a 46-34 lead for McCaskey. And he has scored nine of the 11 points in the quarter for McCaskey. Nick Martinelli has it on the left wing. Gives it up to Colin Horan. Horan looking for a backdoor cutter, nothing there. And eventually the loose ball ends up in the man on Township hand. Martinelli inside, Herb is fouled as he makes the bucket. Once again, this is what Kevin Herb's been doing lately. He's just catching the ball and attacking. And that's a great little pass from Martinelli for him to go to the hole. Herb catches, squares, powers it right back up again. Early in the game, he was putting it on the floor. And now he's just attacking without playing around with the ball off. Herb with 16 points now on the night. Comes up empty at the foul line. The foul for the, what it's worth was on number two on Cameron Whittington. It's a 10-point game again, 46-36. McCaskey on top and with possession. Salisbury baseline pull up, no good. And there's another rebound for McCaskey, but it sticks right in, <laughs> into the wedge between the rim and the backboard. Daquan Talton had the board, but comes up with nothing inside. Should have called first. <laughs> <laughs> Would have got you the ball back on the playground, but the referees say, I don't think so. <laughs> Ten point game, and Manheim Township trying to get it back into single digits. They trail by seven at halftime. Guilford again with a post up. Salisbury has it blocked. Patterson back the other way. Duquan Talton tries to go down the middle. Off balance shot, no good. Tapped right into the hands of John Cameron. Patterson looking to penetrate inside. Heavy contact, no whistle. And back comes Martinelli. Colin Horan ahead of the pack. Can't finish. A good hustle back by Duquan Talton to get the rebound. Back and forth we go, and right now looks somebody looking to get it inside, and it's Cameron Whittington for two more. He now has 13 in the quarter. He's having a monster quarter, slashing, rebounding. 13 in the quarter, 21 on the night. Martinelli off the glass for two. Real friendly glass from that far out. 48-38. <laughs> Again, it's back to a 10-point game in favor of McCaskey. Blue Streak's just trying to get it back into single digits as we approach two and a half minutes left in the third quarter. Dustin Salisbury with it, giving it up to Cameron Whittington. Go for a pick and roll to Perry Patterson. Gives it back there with a hot hand and Cameron Whittington for three. He is just doing everything in this quarter. He is high for his career coming in with 17. That gives him 24 on the night. Martinelli back the other way for a quick two. Martinelli now in double figures with 10. Cameron Whittington has it right now. Giving it up to John Cameron. Barry Patterson setting the screen, nothing there. Now Patterson has it along the baseline. Skip pass. Nothing there. Manheim Township staying in the man-to-man -man defense and McCaskey being very patient with the basketball. Now Patterson looks to penetrate, has a shot blocked, and an offensive foul is going to be called on Perry Patterson. That's his third personal. This is the second time Martinelli steps in on him, too. <laughs> Got to give him credit. You know what? A lot of credit. <laughs> this is a nice little charge. He's there, and here comes Patterson knocking him over. Second time this has happened. Crowd doesn't like it, but the replay definitely shows that Martinelli has him planted, and Patterson runs him over. Harry Patterson will head to the University of Syracuse where he will be a quarterback for the Orangemen in the future and he is tremendously talented. Again, six foot four, 230 pounds, and can run the option extremely well. He can throw it extremely well as well. Guilford inside, no good. Salisbury has the rebound. Dishes it off on the wing to Daquan Talton. Whistle and a traveling violation will be called against Talton. And we'll give it back to Manheim Township with 109 remaining third quarter. 51-40 is our score. McCaskey with the lead. Manheim Township with possession. Colin Horan has it right now. Gives it up to Guilford. Swinging it around. Klingsizen has it right now. Good defense by McCaskey. Stratton giving it up to Kevin Herb a long way from the basket. 
Blue Streaks have yet to hit a three-pointer on the night. They were 0 for 7 in the first half. A whistle and a foul will be called against Mannheim Township as Cameron Whittington came up with a steal. It's probably a good foul. Otherwise, we got two points down the other end with no defense. So the foul called against Colin Haran. That'll be his first personal. Team foul number two against the Blue Streaks in the second half. Nick Martinelli comes back in, making sure all the body parts are working in proper order after getting run over by Perry Patterson. He now steps he knows what it's like to be a defensive back in the Lancaster Lebanon League. He steps in one more time. We're going to take him to the Lancaster Hospital. <laughs> John Cameron gives it up to Cameron Whittington. Patterson thought about the three. Instead, makes a nice pass, but Salisbury couldn't hold on to it. Dennis Stratton back the other way has his pocket picked by Cameron Whittington. Salisbury ahead of the pack. Great move, but he couldn't finish, but he's fouled instead. And I believe it's going to be on Martinelli, and if so, that's number three on Nick. So Patterson with the great feed inside. Salisbury couldn't finish, but they come back the other way, and Salisbury almost finishes in style. Smart little move just to try to put the ball in the basket rather than try to throw it down. Now he's getting to get to the line where he has struggled, and he's got to try to make two shots here. One for one on the night, but just 60% on the season, and he's two for two now at the night, on the night. Eight points now for Dustin Salisbury, again averaging 20.5 on the season. He's had a couple of 26-point efforts, including the first meeting between these two teams. And he also has a new career high this season of 31. Dustin just a junior, and the Division I coaches are going to find their way to Lancaster over the course of the next 12 months to get this young man's name on a, on a piece of paper. This time a foul will be called against Mannheim Township inside as again the Blue Streaks cannot get the defensive rebound and it is going to send Dequan Talton to the line to shoot as Nick Martinelli just picked up his fourth personal. Township has got to get bodies on people on these misses. Excuse me, the foul was on Kevin Herb. That is his fourth. So Martinelli still with just the three. Herb will come out with the four personals and Josh Ellis will come back in for it. Daquan Talton at the foul line. Finish off the two-shot foul. Makes the second. And it's a 13-point lead now for McCaskey. Final 15 in the third quarter of play. Martinelli has it a long way for the basket. Trying to go baseline. And a bump foul will be called against Daquan Talton. They're taking Martinelli's space away, and I agree exactly what he's doing. If they're taking their space away, he's got to attack the basket. Otherwise, it's not going to let him run this offense at all. So Martinelli will now inbound with 10 seconds remaining in the third quarter, trying to set up a screen for Booker. Booker had it knocked away momentarily, runs down a loose basketball. Kling size from a long way away off the glass, no good. Ellis with the putback, no good. And that will do it as... The McCaskey Red Tornado have the lead and extend the lead from seven points at the end of the second quarter to 13 at the end of the third quarter of play. At the end of three, it's McCaskey 53, Manhattan Township 40. Quarter of play for that young man, Cameron Whittington, with 16 points in the third quarter, 16 of McCaskey's 20, and a 13-point lead right now for McCaskey to start with possession. Kevin Herb right now on the bench with four personals. He's the leading scorer for the Blue Streaks with 16. And I love how he got him. He rebounded, he slashed, he did it, he made the outside shots, he just he did it all. You're Manheim Township and you're Jim Kreider right now, you're thinking. Dustin Salisbury has eight, Perry Patterson has zero. We're doing a job on defense, and you look up and you're trailing by 13 because Cameron Whittington has put 24 on the board for you. He's averaging 10 and a half coming in, and he's got 24 as we start the fourth quarter. He's just having a monster game. Doing it inside, doing it from the three-point line as well as he knocked down a couple of long-range ones in the third quarter. And two for two at the foul line as well. He has it right now. Patterson has it at the top of the key. Again, a good look inside. Off the hands of Talton, right into Dustin Salisbury for two. Perry Patterson with yet another assist, and it's now a 15-point lead. Six assists now for Perry Patterson. When Patterson has the ball in his hands, everyone's got to pay attention. He's going to get you the ball, or you're going to get hurt. You're right. 
Gilliford for the long range shot off the mark. One shot and done for the Blue Streaks. Patterson coming into play tonight at 11.9 points per game. Great move along the baseline. Salisbury for two more. 57-40, McCaskey on top and another turnover for the Blue Streaks. Backscomb, Whittington, no good on the first one. The second one, no good as well. McCaskey cannot take advantage of it. And now Martinelli has it at the top of the key, giving it up and working it around Josh Ellis to Martinelli. Turnaround baseline shot off the mark. And Salisbury out jumps Gilliford for the rebound. And McCaskey immediately wants to slow it down just a minute. Ball is knocked out of bounds. It will stay McCaskey basketball. Horan and Herb will check back in for Mannheim Township, and they'd like to see one of them get a hot hand from beyond the arc. So far, the Blue Streaks have not yet hit a three-pointer on the night. And they can make them out there. We've got 63 on the season coming in. Salisbury with a good look. Taunton couldn't hold on to it. Saves possession, however, for the Blues for the Red Tornado as we approach the six-minute mark of the fourth period. Barry Patterson has it at the top of the key where he likes it the best. Cameron Whittington looks to penetrate. His off-balance shot no good, but he's fouled. When Perry Patterson has the ball, he's at the top of the key. If you just look at his eyes, he's just looking at everybody. He's watching who's cutting, who's getting screened, who's going where. And he must have three or four passes tonight where people really didn't catch him, weren't looking for him, they're bouncing off their hands. You're right, those six assists could probably be ten You're or exactly more. Right. If people caught and finished inside. Cameron Whittington at the line now, three for three of the night. 25 points now for Cameron Whittington. Young man who saw limited time at all last year. Patterson with the offensive rebound. His putback no good. And Colin Horan skies for the rebound. 58-40, McCaskey on top, and Mannheim Township turns it over again. John Cameron comes away with it for the Red Tornado. Giving it up to Perry Patterson. He gives it to Salisbury. Salisbury pulling up, baseline jumper two. Dustin's starting to feel it a little bit. He's got six of his 14 in this quarter. I love how he shows the ball. One place brings it to another. He freezes people. Just stops, pulls up, just knocks it in your face. As much as a Skywalker as he can be, he can go outside and stick to three as well. And that's what makes him such a hot prospect. Cling size and off-balance shot, no good. Kevin Herb there with the offensive putback. Herb now with 18. Patterson clearing everybody out and says, I'll take care of this for the moment. Gives it to Salisbury. Back to Patterson with a great look inside. Cameron Winnington for two more. I would have played with Perry Patterson. <laughs> I guess you're going to score. <laughs> <laughs> if you can catch and you can finish, you're going to score points. It's amazing. He doesn't miss anybody. And again, he does not have a field goal on the night. He does not have a point on the night. And Kevin Herb pulls up from the foul line good for two. 20 points now for Kevin Herb. It's a 62-44 lead for McCaskey. Watch his pass by Perry Patterson. Right down low, sees the man wide open, drains it before anybody can help. We got the ball against the glass for two. Salisbury pulls up for the quick three, no good. DeQuan Talton keeps possession, dishes it off. Cameron Whittington there for two more. Once again, the unselfishness of the McCaskey players. A great hustle by DeQuan Talton. Cameron Whittington gets the two, but it's the defense of Talton that gets the steal. And back again comes McCaskey, and another great pass, Patterson to Cameron. Martinelli blocked it out of bounds, and it will go back to McCaskey, but again, a great feed up ahead by Perry Patterson, and Mannheim Township is going to call a timeout. Four minutes and 12 seconds remain in our basketball game. It's McCaskey 64, Mannheim Township 44. The McCaskey Red Tornado putting on an impressive performance so far in front of their home crowd. They lead Mannheim Township by 20, 64-44 with 4 minutes and 12 seconds remaining in the basketball game. And the Red Tornado will have possession underneath their own basket. John Cameron will inbound it, looking for some help. Finally finds Perry Patterson, and that's Perry's first two. And he'll go to the line to try to make it a three-point play. 
Two points, 47 assists. <laughs> Not a bad all-around effort. <laughs> Harry Patterson has been putting on a show all night, passing the basketball, and now John Cameron gives him one back. Nice square to the basket, and with that body, I'm gonna tell you, no one's gonna stop it. Puts the ball against the glass nice and high. Now he's gotta make this to make it a three-point play. And if there is a missing link to Perry Patterson's game, it's right here at the foul line, as I told you. He <laughs> can't do it The 51% on the night, but he's a 1,000 on this night, as he has Completes the three-point play to make it 67-44. McCaskey on top. And reach in foul is going to be called against Kevin Herb, and if so, that is number five on Kevin Herb. Excuse me, the foul is going to be called on Patterson, I believe. No, it's Salisbury 25, excuse me. It is Dustin Salisbury's third. And Cameron Whittington will come out momentarily to a thunderous ovation from the home folks. He's got 29 points on the night and did it so many ways. Inside, outside, and again, the recipient of a lot of great passes from Patterson in total. Good ball movement by Manheim Township. Herb has it blocked by Salisbury, but he's fouled by Salisbury as well. It's a, it's a, it's a nice cut by Kevin Herb, but he puts the ball on the floor and he lets people catch him again. If he keeps the ball off the floor, just take one step, lay it up. Guess what? He gets that up before Salisbury gets there. He might be going to the line to finish off a three-point play if he took one big step and went to the hole. Exactly. Instead, Salisbury picking up his fourth personal will send Herb to shoot two. Kevin has had the big night offensively for the Blue Streaks with 20 points. He's not afraid to attack him. You've got to give him credit there, but if you just keep that ball off the floor a little bit, He'd have a half-second lead on people. The 20 points by Kevin Herb is a new career high, averaging 12.7 points per game. And he goes 0 for 2 at the foul line. Big Joel Holler back in there and gets the uh, rebound. So Mannheim Township comes up empty on that trip, and it's 67-44 McCaskey on top inside of four minutes remaining. And McCaskey is going to call a timeout with 3.39 remaining. Steve Powell wants to bring a couple of fresh jerseys in off the bench with a 23-point lead. And it will be a 30-second timeout called by the Red Tornado. I want to remind you that those of you watching tonight's game, and next week we will have our first girls basketball game from here in central Pennsylvania. It should be a dandy. The defending District 3 Quad A champion Central Dolphin Rams, led by All-Stater Jennifer Harris, taking on the defending state double-A champion Trinity Shra Shamrocks from Trinity High School. Mid-Penn Commonwealth matchup between two very good basketball teams. And we'll have that game for you next Thursday. And the Mannheim Township Blue Streaks have come to McCaskey, and they're going to come away with an L. Not that a whole lot of teams haven't done that. Hempfield giving McCaskey its only league loss of the season earlier this season. That broke a 22-game regular season league winning streak for McCaskey. Again, last year, McCaskey won the Lancaster 11 League title, lost in the District 3 championship game. The year before that, they lost in the LL championship game and won the District 3 championship. So they're looking for that daily double this year. And nothing you've seen tonight will make you think that there's any, no reason that they couldn't possibly pull it off. Brandon Way back in the basketball game for McCaskey. Also into the game with the basketball is Carlos Martinez. He has some trouble with it, loses the handle on it. And I believe he's going to get whistled for a reach-in foul as Martinelli took it away momentarily. It will indeed be a foul against Carlos Martinez. Brandon Way gave some valuable moments in the first half. Did a great job coming off the bench. Contributed immensely. And I think that's what he's looking for. Other people to come off the bench and help this team out. Last year he had some outstanding players, a guy like a Jerry Johnson who right now is starting at Ryder University who could shoot it from anywhere on the offensive half court and Bobby Aberhart playing at Kutztown University at Division II level and he didn't have the bench that he felt comfortable with but now he says he's got a better bench and his practices are much better as well. These guys are buying and wanting to get some more playing time. Brandon Way is one of those players as he almost comes up with a steal but runs out of territory. Brandon Way came in in the second quarter and gave him a good quick couple of minutes and got him five points in addition. And he's going to get two or three or four people coming off the bench and contributing. It's going to make them a much better team. And he's going to get a little bit deeper next week because one of his top players is Naquan Lee. 
who is also an outstanding football player. We're going to head to Delaware to play football for Tubby Raymond next season. And Laquan Lee, after the third game of the season, broke a bone in his wrist, and he will come off the disabled list next week. So if he was eight or nine deep before, he just got nine or ten deep when Naquan Lee comes back. And Naquan Lee is an outstanding athlete and averaging just under six points a game. This team could be on a mission, not only to repeat as Lebanon Lancaster champs, but get back to Hershey and get a district championship again. They're, again, they beat Hempfield two years ago to win the title. They lost to Chambersburg last year for the Quad A championship. And we got a chance to see Harrisburg a couple of weeks ago on their home floor, and now we've seen McCaskey on their home floor. And I don't know if that'll be the eventual matchup, but if it is, it'd be a dandy. Very good game. Some real players out there. Versus a few other teams at the District 3 Quad A level who might have some impact on that before it's all said and done at Hershey Park Arena come the first couple of days in March. The Quad A field is quite a landmine, especially in the District 3 level. And then you get out, if you get out of the District 3, you get in the state, eastern half of the state, it's another minefield to try to cross. <laughs> then we got to go to Philly. <laughs> they said seven, seven teams to the, to the state tournament, and all of them can play. District 1 gets seven teams in the state playoffs out of District, and the District 3 gets five. McCaskey, even though they finished as the runner-up last year, did make it to the states and lost in the second round to Williamsport. Joel Holler at the foul line for McCaskey. Makes it a 69-44 lead for the Red Tornado. Holler knocked it away momentarily out of bounds, last touch by the Red Tornado, so it'll stay Manheim Township basketball. The Blue Streaks trailing by 25 with 2.14 remaining. Again, the impressive performance tonight, not only by McCaskey, but especially by Cameron Whittington as Josh Bucher puts up the long range three. The Blue Streaks finally get a three, but, it might, it, but it's a little bit too late. Bucher with his seventh three of the season. Good look inside. Joel Holler strong to the hole, but he's fouled from behind, and he'll go back to the line. It's a nice drop step by Joe. Nice drop step, nice square. So Joel Holler will head to the foul line, and he'll shoot two. Look, look at this drop step. Squares up, puts the ball up. The only thing he doesn't do is put that ball right in front of him to put it over the rim. He, like, drags it a little bit. That's where he gets in trouble. Because with that body, if he takes that body to the basket, that, that ball's going in. <laughs> Again, six foot six and 330 pounds, second team All-Stater as an offensive tackle. And just a junior. And a great talk about the Division I coaches finding a way to Lancaster to find Dustin Salisbury, the football coach, to be doing the same to find that young man. And a nice little touch for the foul line. Comes up empty on the second one. Makes Thank it a 70 to 47 game in favor of the Red Tornado. Whistle and a foul is going to be called against McCaskey. That will stop the clock with 1.47 remaining. And McCaskey Red Tornado will run their overall record now to 12 and 3 when this one is done. And I Township falls to 11 and 6, and you start to think about those District 3 playoffs. McCaskey, no doubt, should be there. Mannheim Township beginning this season, beginning this week. And things will certainly change from week to week, but they had that unenviable spot at number nine coming in. The one place you don't want to go is that eight, nine spot, as you very well know. <laughs> <isn't>? <laughs> dangerous, real dangerous, because sometimes if you get into that spot, you get somebody who's really hot at the end of the year, who was at 16, now they're playing mad, they're playing just great basketball. When you're, we got Chambersburg, they just played great basketball at the end, and we have to draw them, we're the second seed, we have to travel to them. I think that's because they brought more fans. <laughs> <laughs> Working the ball inside, Tyler Nichols comes up empty, but he's going to go to the foul line. Foul is called on Carlos Martinez. And it will send Tyler Nichols to the foul line. Nichols on the season 17 for 27 at the line, and he will shoot two. Dennis Stratton. Tyler Nichols, also into the game. Mike Otto wearing number 24 for Mannheim Township. Alex Berlucci, number 45 for the Blue Streaks. And rounding out the five on the floor is Denny, Danny Stratton, number 34. Pulling up from inside the arc, Tyquan Cooper in there for McCaskey. He comes up empty. Angel Santana wearing number 15, also in the game for 
the Red Tornado. Nichols posting up down low, comes up empty. Joel Holler with the outlet pass to Angel Santana, who runs it down for two. That's Angel an Santana with his first field goal. That's an outlet pass, like Patterson. Right over his head, throws it the length of the floor. Easy layup down at the other end. Pulling up for three, Danny Stratton hits the long range three. 6-1 junior Danny Stratton hits the bucket, makes it a 72-51 game in the final 40 seconds ticking off. Ball is knocked out of bounds, last touch by Tyler Nichols. It'll stay a red tornado basketball. 34.7 is officially the time left on our clock. We remind you to stick around and we'll have a word in our post-game show with winning coach Steve Powell and our player of the game. And we won't say who it is, but if you've been paying attention, you can probably figure out who our player of the game is is going to be when this is all said and done. So the Red Tornado comfortable with a 21 point lead on the scoreboard and just trying to run some clock and run it out. And they will take the win and head to the locker room. And Mannheim Township not in any hurry to prolong this one as well. As the final five seconds will tick away and the Red Tornado will continue to pad their lead atop the Section 1 standings in the Lancaster Lebanon League. The final score, McCaskey 72, Mannheim Township 51. Stick around, we'll have more from Lancaster McCaskey High School right after this. Back in McCaskey High School where the Red Tornado have kept the beat going as they beat Mannheim Township tonight by a final score of 72-51. We are courtside right now with winning coach Steve Powell. And coach, we talk about the beat goes on. Right now the word separation is the key as you're starting to put a little bit of distance between yourselves and the rest of Section 1. Yeah, that's true. I mean, we told the kids that every game is a big game for us as far as uh, trying to win the section championship and qualify for the league playoffs in the district tournament. So we take them one at a time, and uh, the kids are, are doing that and keeping their focus, and uh, we're trying to make some headway. We talked to you before this basketball game tonight. You, wanted to talk, you talked a lot about what you wanted to do with the full-court trap. Manheim Township had some success getting across the half court, but it was on the offensive half where they had trouble, and you made them pay. Yeah, I mean, they did a nice job trying to slow us up, but what we wanted to do was defensively not to give them any open looks and let them shoot the, the trays. I told you early on that they're a good shooting ball club, and we wanted to try to not to let them get into any type of rhythm, and the kids did that. And uh, it was indicative in the second half they really came out and put the nose to the grindstone, and I think had them shut out almost the entire third quarter before they got a bucket. From, from an outsider's looking in, how difficult is it for, for you as a coach, and, and people talk about the inner city schools, but you have these guys playing defense and thinking defense before offense. Well, that we, we, we always work on the defense, but what the kids know, we say that our bread's buttered on the defensive end. If we can play good D, you can have an off, off night offensively, but you never have an off night defensively. And if we can generate points defensively and keep the team from scoring, I'll take our chances, and the kids are bought into that. And that's what we do. That's our, that's our benchmark. And the other thing that Reggie and I were so impressed with tonight was the distribution, distribution of the basketball. This team, everybody, from one through nine, passed the ball exceptionally well tonight. Yeah, we do that too. And one of the things is that it's indicative. I mean, Cameron had 31 tonight, and he's like our third leading scorer, sometimes fourth. But it depends. Who's ever hot, we give it to him, and we do what we have to do to win the ball game. Steve Powell, the winning coach tonight, and he just led you to, to know who our player of the game is. And Reggie Weiss has Cameron Whittington. Here we are, our player of the game, Cameron Whittington. Great ball game. I'll tell you, really impressed that he did it all. He knocks threes in, as you can see from the monitor. And he went and got the ball off the glass. He found people. He slashed to the basket. Excellent ball game. Cameron, excellent game. i got to ask you a question. What does Perry Patterson mean to you guys out at the point? A lot. He can find people. He can run the offense good. He, he mean a lot at the point. He just nice. <laughs> that, that's excellent. The other thing I have to ask him is this. He did so many nice things tonight. Where do you think your game lies? Because you did everything that I'm really impressed with. Just play every day hard in practice. Play every game hard. And knock down shots. <laughs> That's excellent. Good luck the rest of the season, okay? And back to four stats. Thanks very much, Reggie. And it got a great job by Cameron winning their career-high 29 points tonight. And as we take a look at those stats, we see 
that McCaskey ends up shooting 50% from the field. And a lot of that, Reggie, as we talk about the great distribution this team did, not just Perry Patterson, but everybody really passed the basketball well. And if you can do that, you can make a lot of easy buckets inside. And the big difference for Mannheim Township, and Steve Powell talked about it, they know that Mannheim Township can knock down the threes, but tonight they only got a couple of them, and they got them very late when this one was out of control. They guarded real well. McCaskey stayed after them the whole game. They couldn't make threes. Then, like, like you had alluded to earlier, early in the game, they just lost the ball too many times. They dug themselves a hole, got out of it, then right back to the same hole again. And it seemed like that they never got comfortable out there. In the second half, it looked like Herb and Martinelli, those were the people that really wanted to do something. And the rest of the team got a little bit more laid back. That's the way it appeared to me. Well, three teams will make the Section 1 playoffs from the Lancaster Lebanon League. So Mannheim Township has to start to make sure that they can get one, at least one of those two playoff spots, or one, excuse me, one of those three playoff spots. We talked about it's bunched up behind McCaskey. McCaskey clearly will be the team that gets the number one playoff spot. But Mannheim Township, from now, what they have to do to get a little bit better to get that second or even third playoff spot. And, and that's important to them because right now we're getting to crunch time, not only for 11 the Lancaster League, but the district ratings, I think, will pop out this week. And every game, you're going to move up, down in the rankings. You're trying to put yourself in a great spot. Some people are trying to put themselves in a great spot to avoid McCaskey. Township's trying to find themselves a spot where they can win a game, feel comfortable, and then who knows what damage they could cause in the playoffs. But right now, these district playoffs become very important for everybody playing every game now. And then when you take a look at what McCaskey is all about, and we obviously see that they're not only what may very well be the class of Lancaster Lebanon League, but they are also a contender for that District 3 title. And the main thing that jumps out at, at me as this game is unfolding is you think about Perry Patterson and his abilities, and you think about Dustin Salisbury's and his abilities, and then along comes the man who's our player of the game is Cameron Winnington and drops down a 29 on you. I mean, monster ball game, and he's so modest the way he did it. And, I mean, we watch him drain threes. We watch him slash to the basket. We watch him go to the glass and just get rebound after rebound. We watch him cut, and Patterson's going to find him. He just did it all, and he's just simply saying he's still got to work at his game. I love it. And indeed, the McCaskey Red Tornado with the win tonight. Again, our final score, McCaskey 72, Mannheim Township 51. We remind you, next week, our first girls game for you here in the central Pennsylvania region. And it'll be a great matchup between Jennifer Harris, the All-State player from Central Dolphin High School, taking on the defending AA state champion Trinity Shamrocks. We'll have that game for you next Thursday. Again, our final score tonight from Lancaster, the McCaskey Red Tornado 72, the Mannheim Township Blue Streaks 51. From all of us here, our director, Drexel Wright, my staff man, Jeff Zimmerman, my colleague, Reggie Weiss. My name is Bob McCool. We thank you for watching, and we'll send it back now to our CN8 studios.